you going guys? Mason Corby from Down Under Dynamics again. Uh, today's video is going to be about back carving. Okay, so back angle carving, same as you can use for angles tracking across the sky. We're going to cover a couple of the general things about the position, uh, a little bit about how to control it, um, and how it translates to the sky as well. Cool, so let's crack on with the vid. So, in face, back carving. Sweet. The general position here, we're going to see, like we've talked about before, we want a pretty much straight line from head to toe, slightly curved, so we're on slightly the arch side. Okay, this speed at which this tunnel video is shot is about 70% the Sydney tunnel, and I fly in the 16 one, um, so it's on the lower end of the speed for most of the other tunnels, it's just on the slightly high of the lower end of the speed. Okay. Um, You'll notice the eyes are looking across the tunnel. The arms are pretty much straight up and down in the burble. They do ride a little bit towards the front of the burble, which you'll see on later on in the video as well. We're not bending or hooking the legs back, okay? Because if we did, the wind would come up here and cause turbulence, like we've seen in the other videos. So we're trying to allow for a smooth path for the wind to hit the top of the head, which is the leading edge, and then coming down across the back of the legs okay um, notice the head is back and neutral okay there's many ways to put your head back there's three and then variations of them you have chin back which a lot of people do you have the head back like this which a lot of people do and then you have the head just back the body straight so you can see how that last one the body's a lot more up and straight okay and we're just leaning the head back rather than trying to twist or do anything like that um, just by exposing more surface area in some places more than others which I'll go on to as well so this position here is quite similar to the back angle position or back tracking position okay so you'll see the arms are forward if we're on an angle maybe the arms are a little bit more in this area here to give us a bit more forward speed okay the more forwards we have the arms the slower we're going to go in the forwards motion because we have the arms forward and they're counteracting this large surface area of the body which this is what's pushing us in this direction okay so if we move our arms more forward that's going to slow down that's why you see on this video my arms are pretty much straight up and down and quite neutral not going super quick um, just cruising around the tunnel okay if I lower my head and I make my head as in bring it uh, flatter so I bring it around this area here it's going to cause more surface area so therefore I may go up if I expose more arms to the side to the wider I may go up as well so if we keep playing you can see here okay where the arms are now if I expose more arms more surface area with both of them okay this is going to carry me in this direction up if I move them inwards so more towards in the burble okay not taking them completely off but in the burble a little bit it's going to cause me to go down the other way to go down is if my body as you saw before was on this kind of pitch this angle if i want to go down i can steepen that as long as i'm not doing this and hooking okay if i hook my legs i may be taking this surface area here away and now going steeper but i present a drag by hooking the legs so i need to let the legs go or if I'm going to go flatter with the body, that's more drag as well. So if I want to maintain at this height that my body is now, I would want to, uh, sorry, if I want to maintain, so steeper, middle, and flat. If I flatten my body out and I want to maintain, I might want to bring my arms in, okay? Because I've flattened my body out, I've presented more drag, I need to take some sort of drag away to stay there. Now if I go steeper, I might need and to stay in the same position. I might need to have my arms slightly wider. Okay, it's so the same thing. I've presented less drag with the torso, so I need to add drag with the arms. Now, if you do both at the same time, it's also going to have the effect of just do that same effect, just quicker. Okay, this is how we can steer throughout the tunnel. And some people have different shapes and sizes, and they look different compared to others because they might just be bigger or smaller, so they might have to compensate in various other ways to fly with them at that same speed. Okay, so there are many different ways to do it. Now, you'll see in a sec I go up and down. This is generally done with my arms. I can do it with my head too. So let's crack on and keep watching. Okay, I slightly expose more arms there. Maybe the head, and that causes me to go up. 
Now I'm going to do a switch in a sec. If I switch, notice how the head stayed in the center there. Let's go back slightly. Okay, so the head stayed. Move my arms. I'm moving my arms around to cause me to switch. I'm kind of shifting my weight of my body. Okay, and then I'm, my head's rotating. My body is rotating around that point of the head until I face the opposite direction that I was coming from. This is the same as what we were talking about in all the previous videos about carving and switching directions. It's the same process, it's the same theory. Okay, you can see here how I've exposed a little bit more arms. As we said before, if I have more arms forward, it's going to cause me to not go forward as much because it's equaling or adding to this drag in the opposite direction. This drag here created at this angle is going to cause us to push this way. Okay, because the wind's flowing, hitting here and flowing off. And if I cause more drag at the front, that's counteracting this. So I'm still going to drive forward. I'm just going to drive forward slower. Then if I take that arm away to here, I'm going to drive forwards quicker because I have less counteracting drag that I'm presenting. Okay. I can also add and steer with my legs a little bit so I can drop them like in this shape here. If I do this one, I'm probably going to side slide a little bit. So you can add those for turning and sliding as well, which you'll see at the end of the video. Okay, so when I do rotate, I rotate it. My body is facing this direction now. And I'm going to move in this direction here first and then turn my body. I can turn my shoulders. As I said, I can turn my legs before. Okay, you don't want to get caught up in just turning one way. Once you learn one and you manipulate it, then start trying to use the other ways. Try not to do two at once at the same time. Just isolate, okay, and then you'll be able to do them afterwards together. So let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm still got that motion. I've kind of stopped, not moving, not hooking. Okay, just trying to keep flat and relax. And then I'm relaxing my arms back. You can see that arm, this arm here. As I start feeling that motion forwards, I then start relaxing. Uh, then I start moving and I'm starting to turn. You can see I'm bringing that shoulder around and continuously looking around with my head. Don't just get caught up looking at the wall. You get caught up looking at the wall, you're going to go straight into the wall. Okay, and I'm bringing that other arm. I can steer with that other arm. You can see this arm here. I'm also going to twist that around. It's ever so slight. These are only slight movements. I'm helping steer that around. Then I return to neutral with it. I don't keep pushing. Okay, it's always a constant change. I'm moving, moving. Switch again, and here you can see here very clearly with these legs. Okay, the video is almost done. You can see here clearly with that legs. I've washed that speed off. I've caused a different shape, a different profile with my body, which is going to have a, an effect. So notice here how my legs are straight. Now I want to wash that speed off. I'm dropping that leg slightly down. I'm lifting the other one up. So I'm kind of splitting them. I'm not pushing down more than I'm lifting up. I'm kind of doing equal. Okay, as I do that, the speed's washed off. And now because I've created this angle with my legs, if you're looking down straight to the body, the wind's hitting here and spilling off, it's going to push us in this direction. So I've created that with the legs. Okay. So as I said, you can stick with more than one, one, two, three different things. Try to use them all. Once you can use them all, then minimize the movement and minimize the use of them. And then that way you can use it like driving a front wheel drive of a car, a rear wheel drive, and then you become all wheel drive. Everything's just a lot more reactive. Eventually you feel like you don't have to use anything at all, essentially. So this is quite advanced, but quite beginner as well. The processes all are the same. Um, go have fun experiment. Please comment, um, leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. Let's watch that one more time again in full speed. Okay, so uh, this video is also from the Body Piloting channel. You can look at that on YouTube. Um, and I'll have a whole heap of different clips on how to do stuff and how to do different moves on there. And that's what I'll be doing the tutorials on for the next while. Okay, so we'll be going all the way from um, the belly carving to back aim carving. And I'm going to give you the translations to that with the sky as well. Okay, so you can see the translation with this one. The next one I'm pretty sure will be on layouts over the head. So like and subscribe, please leave in the comments uh, anything that you want me to try and focus on or any other lessons. Um, check out the Body Pilot channel as well. And I hope you could learn something from this. Cheers.